My name is Chantal Melowish and we live in Coffs Harbour. I'm originally from Warrawong and I grew up in Darug country. Um, my son's Isaiah, he's seven and a half years old. His primary diagnosis at this time is autism. And um, when he was born, we were in domestic violence interstate and uh, he was different from birth but the doctors, the GP, just kept putting it down to colic and our family environment and that sort of thing. So when he was 18 months old, we actually had to flee interstate. And um, like a few weeks after we'd left, we came to Coffs Harbour because my mum was here. And a few weeks after we left, we went to the GPs, to Gallon Billy here. And the child health nurse was gonna give him his immunizations. And she said, you know, I said, seen a pediatrician. And I said, no, nobody would see him before. They felt it was just our family situation. And she said, no, you need to see a pediatrician. Something's going on with him. And um, two weeks later, we saw the pediatrician who immediately diagnosed him with autism. Um, they diagnosed him with severe autism and he had uh, psychotic-like behaviours, which meant he was a risk of harm to himself and others all the time. So he was only... Um, a year and a half old at the time, so that was pretty full on. And it wasn't until he was almost three that he had one of these episodes. And um, his left pupil was going like this during this episode. And long story short, got to a neurologist who said that my son had been having seizures since in utero by the sounds of it and started him on anticonvulsant medication. Um, we then went along, that didn't do a great deal. Um, so he needed to go on to a second anticonvulsant and he had a contrary indication so that sent him completely psychotic and he spent all day every day trying to pop his own eyeballs out with forks and couldn't be left alone for a second. Um, so of course rang the paediatrician desperate who sent us back to the neurologist and said he can't be on this medication, he's had a contrary reaction to it. Put him on another medication for the seizures and we gave it to him that night and the next morning he woke up a different child and just couldn't believe it. We'd never seen him like that ever in his life. So said to the neurologist while I was there, could we have more testing done because they'd refused to do more testing due to his behaviours. And um, he said he was comfortable with his assessment, that it wasn't anything more and that my child wasn't mentally retarded enough to have something so rare going on. So sent us away came back to the paediatrician who saw, he was seeing him weekly for years and had never seen him like this so well. So he agreed to do genetic testing and that came back that he has um, a rare deletion on the 15Q gene and is currently the only known person in the world with that. I've called Commonwealth Respite in the past before and um, spoke to them and said, look, I haven't slept in weeks. I just really want someone to come to the house and look after him for 24 hours so I can sleep. And they said, well, look, this is an emergency respite. I said, I just need some sleep because I'm ready to crack, really. They said, well, it's going to be an ongoing issue. Have you thought about placing him in foster care? In one hand, they're saying utilise services. And on another hand, to tell someone to think about putting their child in foster care let alone an Indigenous woman put her child in foster care and think, well, to do that I must say I'm in crisis and will I get my child back? If I had a crumbled every single time someone just assumed I was just a single mum with a little ratty boy with multiple diagnoses who obviously just wasn't coping because she was exhausted, you know, we wouldn't have found out what's going on with my child and he, he might not be here. We've had wonderful people at Northcott. We've had um, great support through our local medical centre, Gallon Villa, and without those people, we'd be pretty well stuffed. Um, before I came, I thought, what's the point in even finding out about it? Because right now we're falling through the cracks, and I said I thought NDIS would just be another big chasm that we'd get lost in and wouldn't be eligible for funding. And hopefully the NDIS will make us empowered to decide what our family's needs are and what my child's needs are instead of somebody else telling me what they think that we need. It's been a really good uh, forum to feel uh, uh, equal and to be able to be heard.
I love that it's uh, an Indigenous thing because it's, it's a little bit more relaxed than when you go to mainstream events and so I feel more relaxed being here and sharing and um, just where we are, it's helped everybody be a little bit calmer and uh, open to listening and I think it's making me stand up and be a little bit assertive in sharing it. Coming to ACT NOW and hearing about the NDIS um, getting all the information. I'm hopeful probably for, I'm hopeful for the first time probably in years that um, we might get some good support. Mm -hmm.